Hey, so hi everyone, I'm Danielle McFadden. I'm president of the Greater Lowell Chamber of Commerce. We have been doing a ton of virtual and digital events and we're so excited for this one. We have Henry Marte here from Marte Media. He, I, I consider an Instagram expert. You do so many awesome things with Instagram. Um, so we're so excited to have you here. We, we arranged this pretty quickly and that's the beauty of what's going on these days. Everybody's at home and it's so easy to just say, hey, you wanna throw this on the calendar? And here we are. So hi, Henry, and hi, everybody. Um, so Henry's gonna be running the training, um, but there's also a chat. So if you have questions, comments, feel free to write them in the chat. And um, I'm gonna let Henry take it away. Hey guys, how's it going? Like Danielle said, my name is Henry Marte. I own and operate Marte Media, and I also run the pretty much all the marketing for Western Avenue Studios here in Lowell. And um, this had been like a guide I originally put together for like the artists in the building. And I was uh, thinking of offering it to people outside of the building. And then he was like, hey, you want to host a class? And I'm like, yeah, sure. What's the worst that could happen? And then next thing you know, this whole thing happened. I'm like, you know what? Let's try to get it out to people virtually, especially now where online presence is so important. So let's see. Uh, how many of you guys have an uh, Instagram business account set up already? Oh, sweet. This is much I, thought it I would do be. not. I, I do not. So I don't even, I don't do anything with Instagram. Uh, never even logged in. So. And he's Michael. a realtor. So that's a great industry for it. Well, that's oh, why yeah. I'm, that's why I'm here. <laughs> yes. And Henry, I use my um, personal Instagram account for my business. What sort of business do you have? I uh, have two. I have a Ruby ribbon business. Um, and it's intimate products and then um, send out cards. It's definitely important to have like a separate business account because like I'm sure you want to post things that are personal to you and it's kind of difficult if you're posting one thing like personal life and then posting product like it's okay to show a little bit behind the scenes on your business account but okay. it's definitely a good thing to try to separate the two where the business one is mostly business with a little bit of personal stuff and a personal one is mostly personal with a little bit of business. And once you create, once you switch your account to business account, it gives you uh, insights that you can see like what sort of audience you have, like who's following you, where are they located, things of that nature. Okay. Looks like Jody has a question. I, um, I just set up our business Instagram um, on Monday. I, of this week and I'm having trouble linking with Facebook. Um, I, it says everything's linked, but it's not working. So um, I'm joined, I'm glad this is happening today and hoping that I can get some tips on what to do. <laughs> I'm guessing, have you gone down to the menu? How are you, what are you trying to accomplish by linking them? So that anything that's posted on Facebook, I can, you know, cross post. So funny story about that. While it's easy to cross post, uh, your Facebook post will get more engagement if you post directly on Facebook versus doing like a repost or Instagram. So, Can you say that again? I'm sorry. That even though uh, it makes it easy for you to just share something from Instagram or directly on Facebook, it's best to just post it directly on Facebook. It gets a higher engagement because Facebook likes to reward um, things that are posted through them. But if I paste, if I post it on Facebook, there's usually a um, a button that says, you know, post on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I don't have that. I don't have that button. Is it set up um, as a business account? I'm sorry. Is it set up as a business account? Yes. So I've been going back and forth and trying to figure out why that button is not there. Both. Facebook is set up as a business account and Instagram is set up as a business account and the button's not there on either one of them. So. As a reporter, on the, on the Instagram uh, business account, have you, have you set up to link it? Can you say that again? I'm sorry. So on Instagram, when you go to edit profile, it, you scroll down there and it shows you, I can't really, it's where it says page right there. So yeah. Just go down there, and then you can click on that, and that's your way of linking it. So, okay. Let me. 
So go I'll ahead. Try to, I don't want to take up. I don't want to take up the whole meeting, but I'll I'll try that. I'm going to put my email in the chat, Jody, and I'd love to help you troubleshoot offline too, and see if we can figure this out for you. All right. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Let me go ahead and put the actual. Sorry, bear with me. Try and remember how to do this. And in the event listing, there was a link to Henry's Instagram guide too. Did everybody get that? Mm -hmm. I'll put that in the comments as well. He created a really awesome guide. I think I can, I think I figured out how to share um, share on my screen as well. Let me just clear up my screen a little bit. It's uh, way too much stuff going on. <laughs> I'm trying to share your iPhone to the screen. I'm trying to share the presentation. Second, oh. Zoom. It's open on your computer. It should show the share. Like, just the share should just show what's actually open on your computer. There we go. I had to give it permissions because I had never done it before. Perfect. Yeah. So, quick thing, the most important thing when it comes to your account is actually so people could, sometimes people don't realize that when they create an account that they set up private. And if you have a business account, you don't want it to be private because you want it to make it as easy as possible for your audience to view your profile. And if you have it set on private, then they have to actually request to follow you and then you have to approve them. This is another reason why it's great to have a separate personal and business so if you want to keep your, your life private, you can just keep it to a personal one and make that one private. And in the business account, you make it public. And then uh, Instagram lets you select what sort of uh, category you want. For the, I'm using Peak Design out of San Francisco as an example for this one. They're a brand that makes multiple types, types of things. So they went with the brand category. If you go mine, you'll see it says photography and videography and so on. Another good thing to do is when you're creating an account or you have an account, keep your name simple. Like the worst thing you want is when you give somebody your Instagram name and it has a bunch of numbers or something of that nature. Like for example, imagine Chamber, Chamber Lowell 4567, that would be so difficult to remember. So you wanna keep it as simple as possible. That still identifies your brand and that people can remember very easily. And the same thing with the, the photo, like it gives you an icon, which some people like using their logo. Some people like using a photo themselves. It all depends on what identifies with your brand specifically and what sort of face you want to put. Like, um, does anybody have a question regarding like names and icons? No. Oh. Another important thing is to actually fill out your con your contact info. You want people to actually contact you. Granted, they could send you a private message on Instagram, but sometimes it's much easier to just have your address, your phone number, where people could just easily click where you're located or send you an email. And always always have a website or any relevant link. So people could just, because at the end of the day, you want to get people off of Instagram and into your sales or your website or whatever it is that you're promoting at the moment. So make sure you definitely include a link on there. Let's see. Any questions on profile tips? Yeah, I started. Oh, oh, oh Peter. <laughs> Sorry. Um, because of the limited and not able to post uh any link that's the way I hate about Instagram you can't post a link in a a, a post so I, I converted to using Linktree yes um, you know because I saw some of my other uh, colleagues doing it and I was like oh this is pretty cool I looked into it so now I have Linktree in both my my Instagram accounts and that gives me the flexibility of including multiple links yeah no uh, tree link definitely works for some people um what sort of links do you have on your tree link? Well, because I was promoting the webinar, 
Um, so I needed some, you know, when I posted the Instagram post, it had a nice graphic. I said, oh, go click on the link in the bio. So now I have the webinar uh, link in there as well as the website link, as well as my LinkedIn profile. Uh, so another thing you could do apart from doing, you could do Linktree or nothing you can do is set up your website, like a landing page sort of thing where it has like a webinar you're promoting a LinkedIn and things of that nature. Cause Linktree is great for multiple links, but it, it makes an extra step for people to get on your website. So if you house all those things on your website, it funnels people directly into your website. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess so. yeah, it's basically just duplicating Linktree on your website as a landing page. Yes. That way you already have them on your website versus have creating an extra step for them to get to your website. And while they're there, they might check out other things on your website. Right. I mean, it's just, I just, that link needs to be like, you know, really nice and easy. What I liked about Linktree is like three buttons and boom, I can go to diff the different places, but yeah. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, Linktree is definitely much easier. I was just going to um, ask about your opinion with putting emojis in your profile. I'm a, I love emojis. I that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big super fan of emojis. I finally caved in and actually added one to my profile because uh, I added the little push pin one for lo to show people like the location. Cool. So, so Danielle, my sorry, I don't. My opinion on that is you only have limited character space on some of like the bio. So, I'm trying to get a point across. A graphic emoji can get that point across faster, a small in a smaller amount of space. I'm all about the emoji, so I just it's interesting to hear different opinions for sure. But also, I think it helps like to show your personality too, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, even in like email subject, uh, I use emojis because again, there's a limited amount of space. Um, you know, I got to think for mobile friendliness and there's, there's only X amount of space you can get your point across. Well, like for example, emojis, uh, Peak Design I use as an example, all their story highlights are, they, have, they don't have names on them. They just use little emojis in the bottom, as you can see. Maybe you guys see that underneath like the little circles underneath the bio. So like their sort of brand, they love using emojis just like Danielle does. All right, let's move on to the next slide. All right, your bio. You have to make sure you fill in your bio, keep it simple. Like um, Peter was saying, you're limited as to how many characters you put on there. So feel free to throw hashtags relevant to your brand, maybe include a call to action or a hashtag or your, your link. Because you are definitely limited, so you want to get your point across as to what you do. Otherwise, people will be confused. So it's, it's free, free real estate that if you don't utilize, it's going to waste. Like, uh, let's see, like for example, Mine says Lowell, Massachusetts, serving the Boston area and beyond, offering variety of services ranging from the traditional to the not so traditional. And on my bio also says I do photography and videography. So as soon as you go on my bio, you see what I do. You see that I also that I serve that I'm based out of Lowell, but I serve the Boston area and beyond. And it also shows that I offer a wide variety of services. So I have questions about your bio. Anybody need a bio tip? I think, can you customize where it says email to, there's the op other options, right? I haven't changed yeah. that. So if you go to, if you go to edit to profile, you go contact options. Hold on a second. I normally will be doing this with showing you guys with my phone, but my phone kind of stopped working yesterday. So the iPad it is. So you can go contact options. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. So you can put like your email address, your phone number, a physical address, and you can create a call to action as well. So a call to action could be, hold on a second. Uh, 
So it has a wide assortment of different options that you can utilize for a call to option. So you could do like a book now, contact now, buy now sort of thing, or even a schedule an appointment sort of thing. And that's all within your edit. You go edit profile, go down to contact options, and then you'll see your contact options there, along with the option to create a action button. Is that what you're referring to, Peter? Sorry, Peter, you're on me. I can't hear you. Sorry, yeah, mine's set up for email, phone, and uh, oh, contact options. The action button on mine is set um, to none right now. The select button, it only gives me gift cards. I think that's why I didn't do that. Now through the engineer, you can offer gift cards directly from your profile. Yep, and also might be what sort of category you have set up on your profile. Oh, okay. Is that so different categories give you different options. Like mine is mostly like scheduling and booking and like through let's see, through QD scheduling and book see. Because they I kind of it was one of those things I wish Instagram would just show you all the options and let you choose what fits you better versus trying to put you in one specific category, like all right. You're a photographer, we're gonna give you these call to options. You're a realtor, we'll give you these here. So it's like one of those things is, it's a tool and it's good to use sometimes depending on what your business is and what your needs are. Because if you could create a simple button where it says like book an appointment now, why not go for it and make it easier for your potential customers. All right, let's move along to the next portion. Photos, my favorite part. So who, who here hates taking photos for Instagram? <laughs> well, I have tools. Yeah, Instagram is one of those tools that like, there's no way getting around the fact that you have to post photos. <laughs> So it's one of those things where you have to make sure your photos have high quality. Otherwise, people would just continuously can swipe through their phone without even seeing what's on there. You want to get their attention. So like bright colors, high resolution, captivating imagery. And it's good to definitely put some sort of thought into your photo. Like if you're walking into, let's say you want to promote a house that you're trying to sell. You don't want to use basic cell phone photos with dim lighting. Like you can use cell phone photos, but you don't want to just take a regular, like just walking through the door, snap a photo and then use that one. You want to put some sort of thought behind into the photo. Like if you know, for example, that house gets great natural light, maybe come back during that time of the day where it gets nat great natural light and take some photos during that time. Like show some of the little details that pull people in when it comes to your photos. Same thing with, with the cards. If you have a new batch of cards that you just finished designing, maybe show like the design and show some of the details of the actual physical card itself. And if you're cutting like the paper for the card, maybe show like the, like the mat where you're actually cutting and like a hand with like the card and almost like a behind the scenes sort of photo, something that gives people something to engage with. And good lighting definitely helps. Another thing that helps is, uh, does anybody here um, hit the little icon to expand the shape of your photo or do you always post on, on squares? I hit it and do it the way that I think it's gonna look best. So with the real estate of Instagram, one of the best way to get the most real estate for your, on your posts is if you do like a portrait four by five, because it takes up the most real estate on the feed. So just scrolling down, if you see, you'll see some, sometimes some photos will just be a square and then some will be a rectangle like this. But if you do a portrait, it just gives you more space as people are scrolling down. If that makes sense. Yeah. Does anybody have a, questions on things of this nature. But one good thing to do is like, you don't have to continuously take new photos to post on it. 
let's say you have a really good day or you're just as you're working just snap photos so you can build up like a nice bank of photos that you can just schedule out or post it out the course of the day let's say if you, you have a house that you're trying to show multiple photos like let, maybe monday you show the outside maybe tuesday you go ahead and show like the entrance or some special feature same thing with the cards maybe you can even uh show like some of the cards being mailed out like it's good to get creative with your imagery and utilize as much as possible and like i said you can just take multiple photos one single day and share that down the road posting tips always use captions you never you never want to take a post and just not put anything on there even if it's something simple as a little caption a little quote a little question something that people like people don't even though instagram is mostly visual it's good to put something that people can relate to or some sort of caption or engagement and then i think she forgot to mute herself and not a good thing to utilize this is a location tag. So if you look on top of the post underneath my name, it says Western Avenue Studios and Lofts. That's where my studio is based out of. If you go on Instagram and you look at any post that has like a little location underneath of it, you click on that and it takes you to every single post that been tagged at that location. So it'll show you like top posts and recent posts in general. So if you guys, you guys have your phones handy? You guys have your phones handy. Open up Instagram and let's say the first post you see with a location, just click on the location. I'm scrolling through and there's actually not a lot of people that tag the location, which is surprising. What location is that? I'm not even, I'm, I've been scrolling and I still haven't found anybody that's actually tagged a location. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Well, um, you can Okay, I just found one. So as, see, as you see, when you click on it, it just opens up a whole bunch of different accounts that have tagged that location. Yeah, that's it's a really good cool. way for people to discover you, what you do, your account in general, because they might just be scrolling. It's almost like a rabbit's hole. They're like, oh, let me see what's been posted in Lowell, Massachusetts. And then they just start seeing random things and like, oh, that's really cool. Let me click on that profile and see more. Oh, that's a cool account. Let me go follow them. Or, wow, that, that's a great house. Oh, man, I could really use some of those cards. So it's another way to make it more visible and reach out to a bigger audience. Like with mine, I, I never post without a location, regardless of what the location is. Because it just seems like if you're not posting some sort of location, it seems like, like a waste. And even if you don't have a fiscal office that you can tag as a location, you can still tag the town. So for anybody that works directly from home or if you're, if you're uh, trying to sell a house, just tag the town that's in. You don't have to tag your home address, which I really would not recommend tagging your home address. <laughs> Another thing you can do, you can utilize is when you're creating a post, you can tag an actual, actual accounts and posts. So if you're going to on the actual post thing, you're gonna hit tag people and you can actually tag multiple accounts and that's another way to boost engagement. As Danielle can tell you, I constantly tag the chamber on things. But think, well, when you away. tag- What was that? <laughs> tag away. So like when you tag another account, they get a notification, they can engage with your posts as well. And if people are like, let's say on the Chamber Instagram account, they can see posts that the, the Chamber has been tagged in. So that's another way to get discovered as well. Hold on one second. Hold on. So much easier doing this with a phone. <laughs> Can't wait for my new phone to come in. Uh, let's see, Chamber.
So like if you go to the actual account, you hit on tag posts and then you can see all these different posts that the chamber has been tagged in. And then you can just click on it and be like, all right, Life as Maven tagged the Chamber of Commerce in this particular post. Oh, Potro tagged the Chamber. So if you follow certain accounts, you can see where they've been tagged in, and it's another way for people to engage with you and discover your account. Like somebody might be like, oh, let's see what's going on with the Chamber and Chamber members. And they can be like, oh, that's cool, let's see. And then that one takes you to a, a post that was tagged. Does anybody here not tag anybody under post? So you go, and a lot of towns have um, Instagram accounts or some sort of things of that nature. So you get tag a town as well or local town organizations. Like I tagged like Lowell and some of my stuff because it's uh, showcasing Lowell. Another thing that's definitely great to you. on that, you're saying just tag something in your vicinity, like with the ad tag? So when you're going to the actual post itself, see, if you look at the post that I'm using an example, you see like a little gray circle with like a person. Yeah. That's showing that I tagged an account. That's not using the ad symbol. That's when you're going to create an actual post. What you're going to do is before. Right, um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Add tags. Well, actually, right, right above ad location, it says, it says tag people. Yeah. So you click on that and then you tag people that you want to tag. Like for example, I tag Chamber of Commerce since I'm a ch uh, chamber member. So it's like, I'm tagging them. I'm tagging the manufacturer of my camera as well because they like seeing the sort of things that people create with their equipment. I also mm -hmm. tag Western Avenue Studios since my studio is located at Western Avenue. Different things in nature. If I'm, if I'm making a post that showcases like the city of Lowell, I'm going to tag uh, the like Lowell account as well and Merrimack Valley account. So, but yeah, I understand about the tagging. So how does that, what does that do? So it, notif it notifies the account you tag and if somebody scrolling right. the account that you tag, they can see your posts as well. So what shows up in their timeline? It shows up under the tag section of their um, profile. Right. And so you're basically you're hoping to get that person to see, right. Cause that people tag me too. So then I jump onto the post and then like that post cause you're making them aware of it. You're hoping for that. Yes. And also you're kind of like sharing um, almost like audience as well. Because somebody can just be on their page and the, they could click on the icon that shows posts that that page has been tagged on. Like for example, if uh, Peter, if I went ahead and, and capture something with you in it or something or your business and I tag your page, somebody could end up on your page through my post or somebody could be on your page and see that I tag you in something and they'll end up on my post. So it's kind of like a intermingling sort of thing. Right. And that's usually when I do it, if I'm at a location or at somebody else's event, if I'm posting something that's for my company, I usually don't, you know, randomly tag like the chamber or things that, you know, something to that effect, even though I'm a member of the chamber, I'm just trying to understand that. It, it seems like it will help um, gain exposure. Yeah, but it's a good way to get exposure. Like these are some of the posts that the chamber has been tagged in. So as you can see, it's like different businesses in the area. And, and this is on the chamber's profile. So I could click on an icon and it'll take me to Root Awakening who did that original post as well. So that's one of the benefits of tagging accounts that are relevant to your post. Like, let's say um, you said you do real estate, correct? Peter? No. Sorry, what no. do you do again? I have a, di a digital marketing agency. Gotcha. So like if you create something for a client or something and you post it on Instagram, you definitely want to tag them in there because then they can engage with it. And then people can see, oh, that's really cool. Let's see who made this thing. 
And then when they click on the actual post, it takes them to your company. So it's kind of like a branching things together, a way of connecting everything. Right. Which hashtags also do that, but they do it in a different way. Which leads on to the next point with connecting things. Hashtags are greatly important on utilizing them. So if you post something without a hashtag, it like these things are ways to make your post connected to something and have it easier to find. If you have no location, people aren't going to be able to, are going to have a harder time finding it. If you don't tag people or relevant accounts, it makes it harder to find. But all hashtags, it's almost near impossible to find as well. If you don't have these three things, most of the people who are going to see your post are people who are already following you. So with the hashtags, is a, it's an, another form of connecting it with like tree branches. Like the first one in this post, it says Western Ave Arts. That's the, the hashtag that we utilize at Western Avenue Studios. So every single artist is encouraged to utilize that hashtag. So if you search for hashtags or you click on that hashtag, it's gonna show you every single post that's been tagged with that hashtag. Same thing with um, your own business tag. Like I use Marty Media as a hashtag. So what that does is anybody who's ever utilized that hashtag, a second, it goes ahead and tags all these different images. So you can just look at one particular hashtag and see everything tied together. Same thing with, hold on a second. So example, I just clicked on the Western, Western Avenue hashtag, which is Western Ave Arts. It'll show you the page that looks like somebody's profile, but what this is, is just you seeing all the hashtags grouped together. So every single post that utilizes the Western Ave Arts hashtag will fall under here. So this is one of the reasons why utilizing hashtags is extremely important. Because all these accounts are pretty much their own independent accounts, but it shows it all together. Might have questions on hashtags. So, they you're basically saying if you have your Instagram, like you, your Marta uh, Marte Media, you also have a hashtag Marte Media. Yes, correct. It's always good to have your your um, your business name as a as a hashtag, and that way, if clients are posting things that you done with them they could go ahead and use the hashtag as well. Especially if there's no- As well as the at sign. Yes. Because if somebody clicks on the, on the hashtag, that's any, any sort of hashtag, they click on it, they're gonna see all the posts that people put right, right. the hashtag on. So it's like a great um, way of people to see like your work. So it's like almost like grouping everything together, but from different sources, not just your own account. Right. I actually use um, what's it called? Hash, an app that hashtag helps, one? an app that helps me with my hashtags. Hey, hashtag just, expert is that the app I think I use. Yeah, whatever gets the job done, right? Well, I mean it's like, you know, it's it's faster. So I can type in one hashtag and it will, you know, use algorithms to figure out thirty hashtags that are related to that hashtag. Or you can you can manually pick them based on a hashtag too. You can generate like it, it, it does, you know has an algorithm to figure everything out for you. And and I've noticed you know yeah if you get the thirty hashtags you know you get some responses right away. And another good thing to do if you're u utilizing uh, with the hashtags is you're limited thirty, but sometimes it's even better to not even use all thirty. Like use maybe twenty eight or twenty nine. That way, in case somebody goes ahead and uses one of those repost apps, it won't delete the caption. So like if you go, if I go right now and I go to repost one of your posts and you have 30 hashtags, the repost app automatically is gonna add the hashtag repost and that will put it past the limit of 30. So when I go to post that as a repost, it's gonna delete the entire caption. Does that make sense? 
like if you're creating a post and it has more than 30 hashtags, it automatically deletes everything. The photo and the, the photo or the video is still there, but the entire caption, all the hashtags are all gone if you go past the, the limit of 30. So I personally don't like doing more than 29 hashtags just in case somebody goes, goes ahead and decides to repost it. So here's the interesting thing when you set up in this way, don't auto post to Facebook. If you have the auto, whatever, auto post to Facebook, then all your hashtags get posted right to Facebook. And they haven't yeah. figured out a way of kind of like cleaning that up if you're using this, um, you know, like all the hashtags at the bottom. Well, there's two ways to do it. Well, like I was saying before, I recommend not using that feature to post to Facebook and just posting directly to Facebook. But if you're really going to, if you're going to go ahead and use Instagram to post on Facebook, what you can do is uh, type up your posts and then just select all, copy, and just um, cut out this hashtag section and then post it. Because that will automatically post it to Facebook as well. Once it's posted, you edit, you can hit the little three circles on your post on the top right hand corner and you can hit edit. From there, you'll get the window to open up and then you can edit your post and then you get the hashtags on there. So Peter, if you're concerned about the hashtags, that's a good way to clean it up. Like make the post about the hashtags and then just edit and add the hashtags. Does that make sense? Any questions on posting tips? Okay, we'll move on. Branding, which I'm sure you guys constantly hear about branding this, branding that. When it comes to Instagram or even any sort of social media outlet or website, it's good to keep your brand consistent, one single voice that regardless of how your customers or potential clients or followers are seeing you, they recognize your voice. Like the same sort of like style, colors, language, logos, color patterns. It's good to keep it consistent regardless of what you do. Because imagine if on, for example, on Facebook you're using one sort of logo and then on Instagram you're using a different style logo and the writing and the language is weird which would just lead on to confuse people. So you always want to keep it consistent. Even when you don't, when you yourself don't, aren't, like for example, the, the one I'm using here, he's just a, he's a freelance photographer. So he doesn't have like his own like company brand. He's just freelance, but his brand is the sort of look and style of everything he does. So as you can see, this, like by the photos, they are they're all edited the same. They have the same sort of strong color palettes and the same sort of um, type of thing. So if you go and find his account anywhere else or you see one of his posts, you're automatically associated with him. So it's great to keep your voice consistent across the board for your brand. Questions? No. Oh. And this touches more on the whole consistency with style and visual. Like every photo doesn't need, doesn't look, need to look the same, but it has to have some sort of theme or pattern, like the way your feed looks. Because you want it to be somewhat familiar when people come across it, regardless of how you utilize it. I use this account just because uh, Becky and Chris are really good at they're very anal about their looks, so they just keep it very across the board. They just the same sort of colors. But you don't, what I mean by that is that you can have the images have the same color palette or just the style you take photos in or the way you post things. If you keep the style consistent, people will tend to recognize it more associated with your brand. Brand focus and one of my favorite coffee shops, which you, some of you might be familiar with, Root Awakening, right here in Lowell. So a good thing to do with your brand is post beyond just a product. 
like humanize your business, promote brand culture and build your brand instead of always trying to sell and use lifestyle photos. Root Awakening does a really great job of it. As you can see from the photos, like when you guys see the photos, what comes to mind? Colorful. Mm -hmm. uh, a place that looks cool. Play film. Anybody, anybody else, when you see like their, these photos as an example for their coffee shop, what sort of vibe does this coffee shop give you? A great place for millennials to go hang out. <laughs> yeah, some of them look younger than millennials. <laughs> <laughs> it, and they do have older people in some of the other photos. These just happen to be the ones I just snapped. But like what I mean by that is that they're a coffee shop, but they're not constantly, like they're still trying to sell you a product, but they're trying to sell you more than the product. They're trying to sell you their brand and the atmosphere. Or it's like, hey, look, this is a great place to hang out with your friends. Look, like, look at this coffee, look at this drink. But they're doing it in a way where it kind of builds more like subconsciously, like, oh, look, this is cool. Instead of just, doing a product shot and just a product shot each individual time. A product shot itself kind of doesn't have the same weight as doing something like a lifestyle one. Like the, the second one from the top on the left-hand corner, it has like a pastry, some sort of cappuccino and a magazine, which a lot of people can, so, can relate with. Like you're sitting there having your coffee, eating a pastry and reading a magazine sort of thing. So there's different, there's ways that you could go about with your Instagram where it's not constantly trying to sell a product. It's kind of like uh, adding kind of life value, if that makes sense. Questions? Henry, how do you go about deciding what style you want to use on um, Instagram? So that boils down to what your brand is, like what sort of focus is your brand? Like what's, what's, what makes you different from other brands and what sort of things you want to highlight? Like you want to represent things that, um, that speak to you and your brand. So maybe that involves like taking a notebook or a piece of paper and like writing down like words that you associate with your brand. Okay, that sounds good. I see like theirs is colorful, so they're gonna go with a lot of colorful things. If somebody's brand is like, let's say, uh, a illustrator who does like um, caricatures, so then their style will be more along the lines of like white with some sort of like pen color in color. A photographer, a good buddy of mine, he pretty much shoots black and white, and he only shoots in squares and does like a white outline. So his Instagram, for most part, is like that black and white square with the white outline. It all depends on what your particular brand represents and the voice of your brand. So it's good to figure out how do you want your brand communicated to the general public. Any other questions? Yes. All right, and then with the whole look of the look and feel. Some people like doing special sort of styles for their feats. Some people add white border. Some people do three of a kind and some people just do special patterns. So there is no right or wrong way to do this. It all depends on how you want to do it. You don't have to stylize your feed. You can just post whatever you want to post. It's just another option that some people utilize. Like uh, Sean Tucker, he always uses white borders because that's the sort of look he likes because when he does print work, he always prints it out with a white border. On my feed, I, I do three of a kind. So if you go on my Instagram, Marte Media, you'll see that I always post three posts. My posts are always like three in a row. Like I said, that's not something you need to do. That's just personal preference. One way you could do it with this, let's say 
if you're working, if you're building something, you could do like three different photos of the in process or the build out. Everybody's favorite time, everybody's favorite category on Instagram, when to post. And it's also one of the most difficult ones to figure out because not every single person has the same, like the time that might be best for me to post might not be the best time for you to post. It all depends on your different audience and it depends on who you're trying to target as well. So if you guys have your Instagram account uh, as designated as a business account, it will give you access to insight tools, which as you continue using your, your account, it'll build a form of insights to give you a perspective as to who your audience is, what time they're online, when, um, what days of the week they tend to be online more. Like for example, my top location is Lowell, Massachusetts, which makes sense because I live in Lowell, I'm based out of Lowell. And then New York and Boston are tied, which also makes sense because we're close to Boston. I go to Boston quite a bit and I'm originally from New York. So I have a decent amount of followers from New York. And the insights also show like how many followers you gain and how many you, you lost. And if you go to your insights and there's no um, information on there because your account's new, the more you start posting and the people start engaging with your account, the more it'll build it out. I, if possible, I recommend doing at least three times, doing one today if possible. If you can't do one today, maybe three times a week. Ideal will be three to five times a week because it'll keep on it'll make it so people keep on seeing your post pop up. If you're a person that posts like three posts today and then you won't post again for another month, it makes it more difficult for people to find you. But if you're constantly posting on some sort of regular basis, you'll continue popping up on people's feeds. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. If you're not, if you're not posting, people can't find you. That's what it boils down to. And this is more of an example of what the insights look. So like for mine right now, well, when I created this, it was 59% men, 41% women. And it does the age breakdown. So my, my biggest demographic, as you can see, is uh, millennials and Gen X. And then let's say for Tuesday, if I were to go ahead and create a post for Tuesday, I'll look at the followers and I'll be like, you know what? 12 p.m. is the best time for me to post. That's when most of my followers are online. Let me post at 12 p.m. And like I said, these two charts or these three charts are going to look different for everyone. So if you guys want, open up your Instagram account right now. Henry, I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, if, if I'm not sure my account is uh, a business account. Can I switch it or do I have to start a brand new account? You could definitely switch it. Oh, good. You're going go to go you're gonna go to um, edit profile on your settings and you can switch yep. it. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. So yeah, I want you guys to go on your, if you have a business account, go on there and look at your insights and tell me what time is set has the highest for followers for today. Who wants to go first? Tip for today, mine's set to um, 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. I'm guessing they're tied. What's that? I said both of them are tied for the highest? Yes, they're both the same. So, like, yeah, so if you're going to make a post today, I would recommend making it around that time. Because you can I mean, make it any other it, time. It's the typical of if we go to the days, right? There are two most, the most days that people are on the internet. Oh, well, now it's probably changing. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, right now it's, it's definitely changing. So the 
the insights is definitely based off of like build up. So it might be slightly off right now, but for the most part, you're going to look at that and you're going to see what time is best. Like for me, it says noon. And like, regardless of what time it says on there, you, you could definitely post whenever you want, but if you want the most engagement, you should definitely go with the time that has the highest amount of followers on there. Because the, the more engagement you get early on, the more Instagram will go ahead and show your posts. Does, do you know if tools like Later and those tools can read the, your own, uh, can get at this data? Uh, there are some third-party apps that can get access data, like Plan, for example, is a good one that shows you like color palettes, shows you insights and gives you recommendations. But for most part, you can get mostly everything you need directly from the Instagram app when it comes to insights. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I know that. But when you're trying to post like, you know, multiple times, you know, at least once a day, it's easier to schedule posts. And, um, I actually have a, a slide on scheduling posts, actually, that's the next slide. Hey, Henry, a quick question. How do I find um, the insights? So you're going to go on Instagram. You're going to select the little three bars on the right-hand corner. And then it'll be the third option. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So anybody else want to share uh, what's the, the best time for them to post today based so off I, their insights? I just looked, and it's pretty much across the board for days of the week almost completely even in between um it was a tie six and nine p.m for us that that, that makes sense because people getting home from work huh. how about you da it's showing well it took me a bit <laughs> to find what page you were on to get there but i'm looking at it it's showing about 9 a.m. and then there's a bit of a dip and it shows like 12 p.m. just a little lower and and 3 p.m. 6 p.m. is a little higher so mostly probably people getting home from work and checking and then um, 9 p.m. Nice. And it's definitely best to like try to aim your posting around those peak times just to get those engagement. Mm -hmm. You gotta put headphones on. I'm not. I'm leaving the room. I'm what was that, Karen? Never mind. And like Peter was saying about scheduling tools, there's different things that you can utilize to uh, schedule and plan out your Instagram posting. There's Hootsuite, Planoly, Plan, and Preview. Some of these charge and some of them are free. My personal favorite for scheduling things is Hootsuite. Part of the reason is because they uh, let you if you utilize their free option, you get plan up to 30 posts in advance and you can manage three accounts at the same time. And Hootsuite also has a feature where you go on there and you, if you don't know what time you want to schedule something, you can hit auto schedule and it'll pick a time for you. And you can set the limits to how many posts you want it to do per day. There's been times where I've gone on assignments for like photography where I wasn't going to have much service or much time for anything. And before I fly out, I'll sit on my, on my physical computer on Hootsuite and I'll just upload a bunch of photos and schedule Instagram posts for like a week or two weeks at a time. So if you're a person that prefers sitting behind a computer versus having to use, a, use your phone, I definitely recommend using one of these options for your Instagram posting. And like I said, some of them are free, some of them charge, but like Hootsuite allows you to utilize three accounts for free with up to 30 posts at a single time, which means if you have 30 posts scheduled, that's the cap you have on it for free. But as soon as a post goes out, that number goes back down to 29. Any questions on scheduling and planning? All right, moving on. Instagram stories. So I, is anybody here not familiar with what Instagram stories are? So, Da, if you look, if you look at well, any of you, if you open up Instagram and you go to like the main screen and you see like little dots on top from different accounts. Yeah. 
Oh, the circles on top you're talking about? Yes. So those are stories. So that's another way to engage your audience and stay relevant. Those are little snapshots into like things that you can make posts or like behind the scenes or you can actually talk directly because those are constantly changing. So even if people don't see your posts by scrolling, they might see you pop up in those little circles for Instagram stories. And that's another way to boost engagement to your site. I mean, sorry, your page. Like for, and the cool thing about the stories, even though they disappear after 24 hours, you can actually save some of them as a collection on your profile. So if you look at mine, I have a behind the scenes and I have Winterfest. And the example I use in the presentation is actually Starbucks. So you can do different categories where instead of your story disappearing 24 hours, you can keep it there permanently on your profile. Like Starbucks has these, for example, Pride, Zodiac, Military, ASL, and Social Impact. So any stories pertaining to Pride, they save it to the Pride collection. Anything pertaining to their military program, they save their military. So if you go to a person's profile, you can just click on a little icon and you can see different things pertaining to that category. Like for example, mine, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to click behind the scenes and this was posted 92 weeks ago as part of my story. But it gives people a different perspective as to what you do and kind of gives them like a behind the scenes as to what goes into what you do. And like I said, it, it's a great tool to get more traffic on your page. Any questions on stories? No? And stories to be, I'm you know. Sorry. I'm sorry, Henry, I do have a question. Do you, have, do you have to use stories? I mean, if you don't use them, does it, does it affect you in a negative way? It does not. If you don't use stories, it doesn't have a real negative impact on you. But using stories has a positive impact, if that makes sense for you. It's like yeah. you're, not, you're not really taking a hit by not using it, but you're leaving a tool on the table. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And like stories is something simple. Like I could go like this right now. And I could post that as my story. Pretty much you guys in this presentation. Went to the next one. IGTV. One of the things that a lot of people don't really aren't very familiar with on Instagram. So as you can see on, on your regular Instagram post, they put a, a limit of one minute. But Instagram released this feature. It's kind of a weird thing. It's a feature so you can post videos longer than a minute, but it falls under a different category. It's called IGTV, and your videos can be up to 10 minutes. But, and the cool thing about it, about the fact that it's not that popular, is that you're, you have less people to compete with. Like, let's say, um, Dot, if you're making one of your cards, you could do like a little quick video of you making your cards and post it to your IG. That's Look. cool, because I've been thinking of doing a, um, another quick video of it for Facebook, but yeah, I'd, I really should do it on um, Instagram too, and I can definitely keep it under 10 minutes. Yeah, and you, you don't even have to film it through Instagram, you could just post it. Like, um, for Western Avenue Studios, I recently did a, a live, uh, Facebook Live with a glass blower. I saved the video and I posted it onto Instagram. Oh, okay. Um, see, so you see like the post has like a little TV icon on it. Yep. That's the designated, that's an Instagram TV post, meaning it's longer than 10, longer than a minute. But when you click on it, it says watch IGTV video. And it takes a different section where you can see a video for longer than an actual minute. Wow. Now, how do you get to the Instagram TV? How do you do that? So when you go to post 
a video like you typically would a post if it's mm -hmm. in a minute it'll automatically yeah. give you the instagram tv option oh all right so if i have a facebook live video that i want to put on there um i would download it first i have to download it first so yes so facebook lets you download videos and they also lets you once you're done with the live session and it gives yeah. you an option to post it gives you an option to save it as well i always recommend saving those uh facebook live sessions and then cross posting on instagram under their igtv section i'm going to try that because i have a um promotion that i'm running through sunday and it's not getting a lot of traction um through my cards by dot Facebook page. So maybe if I get it out on my Instagram page, that will help me um, get it. I'm trying to honor some first responders or nurses or basically essential workers with um, a raffle I'm doing. So that might be a good way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I also recommend sharing on your personal Facebook page as well. Mm hmm like I said, with the IGTV, it's, it's been launched for quite a while now, but it hasn't picked up that, pop, that much popularity. So right now, a lot, a lot of the things people are posting there are getting more engagement just because there's fewer of it. But you also still have to utilize your tags properly to get engagement. Let's see. Next one. Let's see. I think we, already, I think we touched on this already. Why use hashtags? Best way to grow your account, increase likes and engagement, get in front of your audience and community. And this touches more on, it, on the hashtags. Like for instance, a food blogger might post something healthy like a salad or a smoothie and say hashtag healthy lifestyle or clean eating superfoods. And when you search a specific hashtag, Instagram will also show you related hashtags up as well. So types, types of hashtags, community hashtags are the, like the popular ones where you see like a broader audience, like a broader, like it's not just you specifically to your brand. Like from where I stand, it's a very popular one that was utilized for people traveling where for some weird reason, somebody went ahead, took a photo of their, of their shoes and some, um, a cool location and they create a hashtag from where I stand and it picked up. So now if you search that hashtag, you'll see people from over the world with this making photos with the same hashtag from where I stand. That's a community hashtag. Same thing with throwback Thursday. Does anybody here not know what throwback Thursday is? So throwback Thursday is another way. It's another example of a community hashtag where you're tapping into larger audience. It's our larger population when it's not just your hashtag, it's just a broader utilized hashtag. And then branded hashtags, those are the more unique ones that relate with your brand identity. They're designed to connect themes of your brand and audience. They can provide a can promote campaign or user content. And like I said, this is the one like for your business, like hashtag Chamber Lowell, hashtag Marte Media, hashtag Western Ave Arts. It's a hashtag that ties specifically to your brand. Like you do hashtag carts by da as one as well. Like Jody, what's the name of your business? It's um, New England Sports Floors. So do you have a hashtag that you, you utilize for your business? Um, I haven't started um, anything yet, but we're gonna use, um, I'll use NE Sports Floors and probably New England Sports Floors. Yep. Those are prime examples of branded hashtags that you should definitely start using and putting out there because then people will see it and you can even pr promote it with your own stuff. So you start getting people into the habit of knowing that hashtag and utilizing that hashtag. And then it serves like a little portfolio. Let's see, engagement. Does anybody have any questions on hashtags before we move on? No? Yeah. Right. Engagement. But sometimes people think that Instagram, you just post things and just walk away. 
but Instagram and social media in general, it's like a voice that represents you. So you kind of have to engage with people. You can't just post something and not touch it ever again, unless you're posting. So it's good to engage with other accounts, like and comment on posts, things that are relevant. It's almost like uh, if, you're, if you're, your brand, your Instagram account, if it was a person, how would it, how would it interact? How would it behave? Like if um, we, for your um, particular account, like let's say you're scrolling down there and you see something, like somebody posted something about like a birthday coming up. Be like, oh, happy birthday. And, and say like, if you're still looking for a birthday card, we offer a great assortment of cards. Please check out my profile sort of thing. Okay. Or, or just even saying happy birthday from all of us at cards at dot. Like just little things where it, it kind of creates a conversation with people. Like it's not just you constantly trying to sell something to somebody, but adding like a life value and yep. builds a relationship, which could lead to collaborations and people purchasing things from you as well. Good advice, Henry. Thank you. I try. It's a little, it's a little overwhelming sometimes engaging. So it's definitely good to like, don't don't go too crazy with it, but definitely do some sort of engagement. Okay. Closing discussion. Uh, see, what do you guys think are good hashtags and practices for you guys to utilize? Um, one of the hashtags that I tend to try to use is um, spread kindness or scatter kindness something like that, along with my hashtag cards by dot and hashtag send out cards, which is the corporate company that I'm under. Nice. How about, how about uh, anybody else? Hi, hi, Henry. It's Maria Murphy. Hey, Maria. Um, I have um, like dot the corporate tag is pure haven. And I do the same. It's the products are non-toxic. So I use non-toxic or toxic free or toxic free living or, you know, pure product and stuff like that. Anybody else? Personally, I like to, I have a couple of like hashtags that I use for my family and my kids so that when I click on the hashtag, I go and I can see a gallery of all the pictures. So um, handy. And then for the chamber, one thing that we did when we started using a hashtag is we wanted to use GLCC, but it had already been taken. So we used GLCOC. Um, so that's another thing. If you're going to start using a hashtag, if it's very specific, like a cards by dot, you would want to make sure there wasn't already a cards by dot because then it would kind of confuse the branding. Yeah, there isn't. It's my URL too. Perfect. So you're nice. lucky. Definitely a good point because sometimes hashtags are already utilized with somebody else. And sometimes it makes sense. Like if it's toxic free living, then you, you have the opportunity to be found kind of within all the other people that are posting that. But if it's something like to your brand, you wouldn't want somebody else using it. I am like distracted by the bird. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one who's been distracted by the bird. <laughs> It's always school. The PTO meetings are in the art class and there's birds in the art class. So like in the middle, you can like always hear, you know, birds. This is Wally. I call him a pain in the rear. Hi, Wally. <laughs> I feel like I need to get a bird like right here or something. I, <laughs> I can't cage animals. I'm weak. It's like I can't keep them in the cage all day. Aww. Well, thank you, Henry. This was very helpful. Does anybody have any additional questions or feedback? I have one more question, please. Um, I, I just switched to a business account. And uh, of course, right away, it, it prompted me with, um, do you want to promote this post? How do you feel about promotions, Henry? Sorry, so promotions, it's definitely difficult because that's the way they make their money. So I wouldn't recommend right. promoting everything. Like you, 
there are some benefits to promoting, but you shouldn't promote every single thing that prompts you to promote because then you would just burn a huge hole into your bank account. Right, right. Okay, good. That's what I thought. Thank you. You're welcome. Like definitely, it's by case by case matter and figure out what exactly you want to post and make sure you're the one that you're, you're boosting is very well put together and you have some sort of goal that you hope to achieve by it. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you so much, Henry. This was great. We really appreciate it. Um, we're going to start doing more of these trainings because I think it's really helpful. And, you know, now's the time for us to be brushing up on some of the things that we've always wanted to do and haven't had the time to do them. Um, so stay tuned for more of those. And we will upload this and put it on our Facebook and YouTube so others can check it out and so that people that were here can review. But definitely grab Henry's Instagram guide. It's right on the event listing on our website. And it's free. And it's yes, free. thank you for that. That is awesome. Really, really helpful. So thank you, everybody. And I am going to stop recording.